So I'm going to go through a print process now using polystyrene um, tile and working with this portrait that is um, by Pablo Picasso. It's a self-portrait. It's actually one that he did in colour, but for the purpose uh, of showing this demonstration, I've just printed it out in black and white. Uh, the only other equipment that you're going to need is a pencil and then I've got some uh, water-based printing ink, a tray to roll out into and a, a roller. Now, if you were going to do this yourself, it doesn't have to be uh, a painting by an artist that you work from. It could be one of your own photographs and it doesn't have to be a portrait. It could be uh, anything at all. Because polystyrene has got a bit of give in it, um, one thing that we can do to help the process is actually try and uh, use the print to give us a um, something to work from, really. So I could, if I wanted, just with a pencil, draw freehand onto this and it would press into the surface of the polystyrene and that would give me the indent that I need. Um, but what I am going to do is lay this on top. Now, obviously, what you need to do before you get to this point is make sure that the, the print and the piece of polystyrene are roughly the same size. OK, so once it's on there, I'm just going to hold it in place with uh, one hand and then draw, not pressing too hard, but with enough pressure so that if I lift off the copy, I can see underneath the mark that's been made and I can just about see that. OK, so there is enough of an indent being made. You may need to go backwards and forwards over the line a little bit and um, being careful not to actually sort of push through the paper. OK, so I think I've got the main shapes in there now. Um, one thing I would say is that if you're using a pencil, it's a good idea not to have your sharpest pencil. Uh, it's fine if it's blunt because it's less likely that you will pierce the paper while you're drawing. So a blunt pencil is probably a good thing for this. So. Once you've got most of the marks drawn on, you can move it away and you may be able to see some of those marks that are on there. You may not. Um, one thing to just check, you can feel with your finger to make sure that there is an indent. But uh, another way is just using the side of your pencil very gently. If you shade across the surface of the polystyrene, that will just show up a little more clearly where your pencil is pressed okay so you can see just one or two of those marks showing up now having done that what you need to do is to redraw those lines and this time you can press in a bit more but being careful not to go through the polystyrene into create a hole. And this technique is 
one that really is not so easy to do with very fine detail but it will work well with something that is a bit more abstract perhaps some of these marks that I'm putting on now I'm not pressing as hard with some final marks there and I think that will probably do okay so I'm going to put that to one side now and I'm going to bring in my tray my inking tray and my water-based ink and the way we use this is we just want to put a small amount of ink at the top of the tray, not in the middle. So just there we are, a line across the top. That's all we'll probably need to start off with. And then the roller, the way we do it is dab the roller into the ink. And then we're going to try and roll a nice, even flat surface in a square or a rectangle. We don't want to sort of fill the whole of the tray with this. We just want to try and keep it quite controlled. So we dab and bring down a small amount of ink at a time rather than all in one go. And you can see that ink now is becoming a nice even surface, a nice layer, all roughly the same thickness. You can probably hear the noise the ink's making. So it sounds a bit sticky. If it was to sound like a Wellington boot coming out of mud, that would be too thick. So quite a thin coat like that move that to one side we bring back in our polystyrene and what we're going to do now is roll a layer of ink onto the polystyrene now this is water-based and we want to work quite quickly so that it doesn't dry out so here we go so I'm going to cover all the polystyrene as soon as you do that you can see all the marks that you've made you can keep bringing down ink onto the surface that you've rolled. So I'll keep on bringing it down a bit at a time. I'm trying to be as neat as I can in terms of rolling it onto the surface of the polystyrene. So I don't want to get it on the paper all the way around it if I can possibly help. Make sure you go up to the edges, make sure you get a good coverage like this okay I think and then move that to one side I'm now going to bring in a piece of paper so I put my paper down flat like this then carefully turning the polystyrene trying to get it nice and centered and then I'm going to put my hand on the back of the polystyrene turn everything over and then flatten it down as hard as I can. Some people use another roller, some people use the back of a spoon and both of those things are fine but I'm just going to use that bit of my hand to press as hard as I can. You can as you're doing it just Hold the paper and peel up a corner to see if it's transferred. And if it hasn't, you can press a bit harder. I'll go back over it. When you think you've pressed it down as hard as you can, you can peel it back carefully. And the ink should have transferred across the paper. And indeed it has. And that's rather pleasing. We like that. I think that's worked, worked really rather well. Okay, so we have from the photocopy that we started with and the plate 
the polystyrene plate that we drew on, even though it looked um, a bit messy maybe to start off with, and then the print that has resulted in that. Now that print can dry, um, and you can either leave it like that, or you could paint on top of it, or maybe use wax crayon or oil pastel on top of it. If you did different colours, you could use the different prints and maybe collage them together to make a print that had different colours on it. And all of that would work really nicely. There's one more thing that you might want to have a go at doing while you have got the opportunity. I'm just going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to bring back my ink tray in. Just ink up this plate again a little bit more. All right, so it's a very thin surface of, or thin layer of ink that I've got here now. And I'm just going to now take the copy that I had here. Now I've got um, another piece of paper um, and it's a bit big so I'm just going to tear this in half. So this is something that may work. It's a bit of an experiment. What I'm going to do is just carefully drop that piece of paper onto the surface of the ink and then I'm going to get the photocopy and lie that on top. And I'm not pressing hard at all. It's really important you don't press hard. Now I've got my pencil again. And with my pencil, I'm going to hold it quite far back. And I'm going to redraw some of those shapes I can see here. And I'm just using the point of the pencil to go over the shapes. I'm going to start off with the big shapes first because then I'll know they're done. So I've done the nose, which is particularly big. And the eyes, like this. So I've done a range of marks there with the pencil. One other thing you can do as well, because you can see some tone in this, you could use your thumb or your finger and just gently smudge, that'll give a softer mark than with the pencil over those areas. And when you're happy that you think you may have done enough, then what we're going to do is just take the photocopy off. And again, let's see, what have we got? Okay. So you can see with this print here, it's really probably a bit darker than I'd have liked. You can see some of the marks, but it has um, it has been um, it has picked up more ink than perhaps was was ideal. Having said that, when it dries, you could then paint back into it, and you could maybe make some of those areas a little bit more clearly defined. The last thing is that you'll see on this surface here, we can just about make out the shapes from that print again. And you could add some more shapes to it. So you could use perhaps the wrong end of a paintbrush and you could draw back in. You can see if I do that, I can make some extra marks in there. And you could sort of scrape away at some of that ink a bit more than I'm going to here. But having done that, um, another piece of paper just laying down on the top there and then with your fingers, just the flat of your fingers, gently you can rub the back and you can keep checking so you can see, can't you, there and play around with how much pressure you want to apply because you might need a bit more pressure than you think So I'm actually applying quite a lot of pressure now because it's working, so I'm happy with that. Uh, and you could even draw on the back if you wanted, but if I peel that back now, you'll see that we've managed to get yet another print. So from that process, from polystyrene, we've started off with a polystyrene print, 
it's ended up like that and then a mono print and then the negative from the mono print so four or three processes three results all of which you can then go on to develop a bit further if you like okay so it's your turn now have a go at doing this